I just want to take this opportunity in this video to thank two people who were instrumental in me breaking the last of the bad habits that I had acquired during my youth, namely an addiction to sports. And the two people I want to thank are President Xi Jinping of the People's Republic of China and Comrade LeBron James of the National Basketball Association, who I guess is sort of their chairman of uh, social justice. And I want to thank these two men for allowing me to break that habit, which until they did it, I really never understood how bad that habit was. And if you stick with me till the end of this video, I'll explain to you just what a waste of time my sports addiction was. And it's something you may need to think about yourselves. <laughs> Now, as a kid, I picked up three habits. Religion, which I managed to escape from in the late 60s and early 70s. Broke that habit. Voting for Democrats, a habit I broke in 1980 when I got to cast a ballot for Ronald Reagan. And the third habit I picked was an addiction to sports, which I picked up when I was very young from my parents and from some of my grandparents. And it wasn't until this year, 2020, but I finally broke my addiction to sports. And that's why I want to thank Xi Jinping and LeBron James. I haven't watched a professional or college sporting event on television or in person since the Super Bowl in early February 2020. That's a hell of a long time to go without sports. But I did it. I went, thanks to Xi and LeBron, maybe you could say, you could call it going cold jerky. Chairman Xi Jinping, of course, was the first person to help me break that habit back in February, March, and April because of the handling of the flu that emanated from, I guess it's a city that I shouldn't mention or name on YouTube, or the algorithm will catch it and maybe I'll get banned on this video. But we all know where it came from. I don't need to explain that to you. But almost at the same time, things were going on with the NBA and with LeBron James. I'm not talking about Jacob Blake or George Floyd or any of that. It had to do with Hong Kong, protests in Hong Kong, statements coming out of the NBA, and then the NBA shutting down any criticism of what was going on in Hong Kong with the Chinese because the NBA needs the Chinese market. They need the Chinese money and a lot of their sponsors and the people who do the shoes and all this stuff. They're busily making their goods that they sell over here for enormous prices in China using cheap labor, sometimes using prison labor, sometimes, according to some stories, using incarcerated Uyghurs in concentration camps who are performing forced labor. But, you know, aside from that, this all helped to get me to stop watching the NBA. Not that I had been watching much anyway at that point. At one point, I actually got involved in this Twitter discussion after LeBron James came out and said that he had been hunted, he felt hunted in the United States. And I suggested that if he felt that way, he should just leave the country. I didn't particularly say anything about where he should go. In my mind, the first place I was thinking about, given the context of what was going on, was maybe LeBron should move to China. He loves China that much. He doesn't want to see them criticized. They love him over there. He's got a big fan base. He'd be a powerful player playing in China, to be sure. He's a powerful player over here. So that's what I had in mind. But of course, I was immediately attacked on Twitter as a racist for suggesting that LeBron James go back to Africa, which, of course, I had never said go back to Africa. I never said that. I didn't say it in a tweet. It wasn't even in my mind. I just suggested if this country's all that bad, he's got plenty of money. He, I'm sure he could retire if he wanted to. And just move to China if he thinks it's so good over there that they don't have human rights problems or anything going on in Hong Kong. Move to China, LeBron. I don't have a problem with that. And I say that as a person at various times in my life, I've considered moving to Australia. I've considered moving to Israel. And I've considered moving to South Korea. So, you know, I'm an Italian-American. I don't want to go back to Italy. But there are other places in the world if things got too bad here, I would consider moving to. So what's wrong with me suggesting LeBron James, if he feels like a hunted man in the United States, he should go back, not to Africa, but to where 
he makes his money, China. And that's what I was suggesting. But of course, I was attacked as a racist. I think even Stephen Smith from ESPN weighed in at one point and went after me, which was fine. I really could care less because, you know, I'm not saying the man should go back to Africa. I'm just saying he should leave. The way cops are pursuing and hunting LeBron James, they probably want his autograph. If you see pictures of LeBron James being hunted, and I have, who's doing the hunting? Many of them are white, but they're not armed with guns. They're armed with cameras. They're armed with phones. They're armed with notepads. They're reporters. They're the paparazzi. They hunt him all the time. He should feel like a hunted man because he is a hunted man because he's a big time celebrity. When was the last time you saw an NBA player gunned down by a white nationalist, gunned down by a white supremacist, gunned down by a white cop? What happened to Ortiz in the Dominican Republic? Was it some cop that got him? No, it was some idiot in a bar who what, stabbed him with a knife or whatever it was. That's the way LeBron James would go. But if he really feels that way, if he feels so endangered, I thought it was a good idea. Move. If I lived my life like that, if I felt every time I went out of the house, I was being hunted by some group, whatever group might be, I'd leave. I'd pack up and leave. I know people who are considering right now selling everything they have, getting the money, getting the cash, and moving to another country. What's wrong with LeBron, saying LeBron James might often, you know, want to do that himself? We just had uh, what was a Hollywood star who said if uh, Donald Trump wins, he's going to move to Italy. Usually they move to Canada. He's going to move to Italy. And didn't you ever notice, do you ever see any of them say, we have another neighbor, like Mexico. Do you ever see any of the Hollywood stars who say this country is racist and if Trump wins, I'm moving to Mexico? Why do they always move to one of the whitest countries on the planet? at least in this hemisphere. They moved to Canada, which is whiter than the United States, which is whiter than many of the other places in Central and South America. I've never seen a celebrity say, if Donald Trump wins or George Bush wins or whomever wins, I'm moving to Mexico. I'm moving to the Dominican Republic. I'm moving to Haiti. I'm moving to Venezuela. No, they always are going to go to Canada. And of course, they never even go there. And then on top of all that came the reaction to uh, the death of George Floyd and the shooting of Jacob Blake. And now suddenly, not just the NBA, but all the leagues are going, they're going to strike, they're not going to play, they're kneeling in solidarity, the WNBA walks off the floor during the national anthem, BLM is plastered all over the fields or the, the places that they play. And... Fine. You want to do that? That's not what I watch sports for. You know, sports is you're investing your time and also your money. So why should I give them my money if they're going to shove their politics down my throat? Sports, I think the term comes from some old French term, archaic French, which is like distraction or diversion. That's what sports is supposed to be. I don't watch sports so I can be lectured to by somebody from the left or the right. I watch sports to enjoy the game. I wouldn't want to see, you know, Black Lives Matter plastered on the mound. I wouldn't want to see Make American Great, MAGA, plastered on the pitcher's mound or on the side of the stadium, unless it was in some sort of paid ad. That would be true also for BLM if they paid for it. I don't need that. That's, I want to get away from politics. My whole life is politics. Everything in this damned country is political. Everything has been politicized. And now they're politicizing sports as well. And if they want to do it, that's fine. I just won't watch. Just like they politicize the movies, I won't watch. They politicize corporations, I won't shop there. I have the right not to do that. I have a right to boycott. It's a powerful right that we've exercised even before the American Revolution. We use boycotts. And that's what I'm doing. I just, I want diversion. I don't want to be lectured to. I don't want people walking off a field, expressing their opinion during the national anthem. They can say and think whatever they want when they're not playing. I use T-Mobile as my phone carrier. They actually, a couple weeks ago, offered me free 
Major League Baseball for the rest of the season. All I had to do was click on a couple forms and fill it out. And I looked at it and I said, oh, it's free. I should do it. Why, why shouldn't I get something that's free? They're offering it to me for nothing. I thought, the hell with it. I don't even want to watch. So I turned down an offer to watch Major League Baseball on television, thanks to T-Mobile, for free. And I said, no, I just, I just don't care. And I have not, again, watched a professional or a college sports game since the Super Bowl in early February. As I stepped back from sports, I started realizing that my lifestyle had changed, and I would say for the better. I was exercising more. I lost 40 pounds. I felt like I was in better shape. I'm, a, I'm 68. I'm not that in great shape. I'm not 30 anymore. But compared to what I felt like a year ago, I feel pretty good, despite I'm struggling with a number of underlying problems. I was reading more. I was sitting around thinking, thinking about things I might write or do. I took up a new hobby, making YouTube videos, which takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So please subscribe. And I thought, where did this time come from? Where did I suddenly, why wasn't I doing this before? Why wasn't I spending an hour, an hour and a half a day on an exercise routine before? Why wasn't I reading a book every three weeks? Big, thick books, thousand page books, the kind of history books that I read. Why wasn't I doing these things? Why hadn't I spent more time just laying around thinking about stuff? Where had I been wasting my time all these years? And I realized the answer was watching sports. So I got out my calculator and a pen and I started writing down an estimation of how much time I usually spent watching sports. The biggest offender was the NFL. I won't go through all the numbers, but I estimated that I averaged about 900 hours a year watching sports. It comes out to about 16 hours a week. The average American watches about eight hours a week, but I watched more for the most part, because of the NFL. Sometimes I'd watch, you know, the, you got three games on Sunday, you got Monday night, you got Thursday night, it's five games. And then there would be the repeat games on the NFL channel, which I get from my cable subscriber. And I'd watch, you know, three, four, five or six games there. And it all would add up. And then you have a bunch of, uh, you know, watch uh, hockey games or lightning, uh, uh, the playoffs during Major League Baseball. I didn't watch too much of a regular season, Major League Baseball. Uh, the NBA, uh, occasional s soccer game, uh, and then college basketball and college football. And it all added up to about 16 hours a week. That's a lot of time if you think about it. It's almost 900 hours for the year. If you work 40 hours a week for 50 weeks with a couple weeks on vacation, that's 2,000 hours. I was spending just under half of that just glued to a television set or sitting in a seat somewhere watching a sporting event. That's a lot of time. That's why I have so much time to do other things now, because I'm not watching all these hours of sports. Now, if you may, we may watch more. I know people who watch more than me, and there are people who watch less. Again, the average, they say, is eight hours. But imagine if your boss said to you, uh, you know, you don't have to, we'll pay you for five days this week, but you don't have to come in Monday and Tuesday. You can take that, do that time and use it however you want. You would think, wow, what a windfall of time I have. I have two extra days, eight hour days to do something with. That's basically the situation I'm in now, since I'm not watching any sports. I have the equivalent of two work days a week to do other stuff with like get in shape, like stay healthy, like read, and all the other things I'm doing, including making videos like this. If I was spending 16 hours a week watching sports, if I was right now watching uh, preseason NFL games, uh, Major League Baseball games, and the NBA, and the NHL, I wouldn't get all these other things done. There's not enough time in the week, unless I'm gonna go without sleep, so that's why I want to thank President Z, soon to be Chairman Z, 
chairman for life, and comrade LeBron James. They both have helped me break my sports habit, the last of the habits from my childhood. And it's one that's an enormous time saver for me. It allows me to get so many other things done and something you should consider yourself. Now, if you agree or disagree, let me know in a comment. If you can, uh, like this video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you'll know when I post new videos. And as we confront the resistance, remember to keep fighting.